All right, Deniability, you are live on the air. Hi, how's it going? Good, good, good. Uh, how are things down in South Africa? Uh, we, we, we're getting there, we're getting there. We haven't gone to <laughs> what... <laughs> um, hey, cool. Thanks for taking the call and doing it on Discord. It's very expensive to call from Oh, South yeah, Africa. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um... So yeah, I've uh, I've been trying to get pick your pick your brain on this topic uh, of abortion because yep. it's it be, it's come into recent flux for me. I, I used to be on the the pro choice side mostly because I just dismissed the pro life. Uh, uh, sorry, one sec. Hey, on Skype there, I'm just gonna put you on hold. Okay, uh, y you'll be next. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah, so I. I previously dismissed the pro-life side because they're, they're just religious nuts. It was around the time I, I converted to atheism, as it were. Right. Um, Can I ask uh, you, yeah, just before you yeah. get in, get into this, uh, why do you think there are two sides? Well, I don't. That's the thing. I okay. think it's a very nuanced topic, and I think the, the, the way it's painted into pro-choice and pro-life it it's quite stupid the actual issue. Yes, it's actually yeah. it's actually a promotion of uh, ra uh radicalism i think uh, to, to have these radical devotions to this group or that group but go ahead correct so uh, let me start with uh, i i i'm i'm for abortion from the perspective of i think it does a lot of societal harm to have it completely illegal um because you don't have doctors that are trained in doing it properly and people clearly seek it out and if it's illegal it gets done in very dodgy ways and there's a lot of harm that comes out of that so i want it to be legal from that perspective but what i'm balancing out is since it's been legal and i'm going to use america because that's where we have the most reliable stats from it since it's been legal i think it's the legalization of it has been abused and what mm. I mean by that is, I mean, 60, 70 years ago, you, you could potentially get pregnant. And that's just for the, the case of debate here, talk exclusively about sober consensual sex. Um, you, you, could get you could get pregnant on accident and it wouldn't be your fault. I feel like today we have the technology where if you're a sober consenting adult, um, you can 100% prevent getting sex, whether th uh, getting uh, pregnant, whether through the use of multiple contraceptives or um, certain contraceptives that I believe to be 100% safe because I've been using for the last 10 years, um, or just uh, getting fixed and not having the opportunity to get pregnant. Well, let's so, let's talk about the potency of sex and how it feels to have unprotected sex versus protected sex. So let's talk about condoms for a second. Condoms so, suck. So, so, yeah, kind of right? suck, but the, the so the the contraceptive I, uh, I've always used in my relationships is I uh, forget the metal, but it's a, it's a metal plate that's inserted somewhere around the womb inside the man's it, penis. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, sorry, in, in the woman. And, I know. Uh, I'm 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 just bullshitting you. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it's there, the woman is rendered completely infertile. She can't pass an egg. So if you, right. uh, and it's a it's, it's a very cheap um, outpatient procedure. And yeah, are you are you, you're talking about the um the the what's it called uh the uh, uh what is that thing called chat help us out um it, you're talking about it it gets in uh it's like a T-shaped thing IUD yeah that's what we were looking for I are you talking yeah. about the IUD yeah yeah I, I, I don't know the name but my last two relationships uh, three and five is each we use that and we didn't use any condoms and didn't use any pregnancy pills and we never got pregnant um, nice and uh, so, 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 so I, if I it feel... did uh, let me ask let me get to the, the crux of this here so if it did happen where where uh, you guys did get pregnant and and she decided oh yeah th this isn't the right time I'm just gonna go get an abortion I'll see you later um, you you hold that uh, do you hold some weight on that as opposed to just like uh you know it because it, it's essentially kind of like taking the the morning after pill except a little bit later right yeah so well uh, yeah that, that 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 that's where i'm specifically struggling right so Let's just break this up. Like, let's talk 26 weeks to term sober consensual sex. I think abortion is wrong. Um, 
the the the, the there's, I, I I just can't get behind. And and what's the twenty six? And what's what's the significance of the twenty six weeks? I I have an argument for that, but but uh, do you make the yeah. same argument about the pain neuron delivery? Yeah, in the correct. brain. I, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I so, cut it off at 26 weeks. I say before 26 weeks, I don't care if a woman decides, uh, I feel like I want to travel now at the 20, at the 22 week mark and they get an abortion. I really don't give a shit. I, I, I couldn't give less of a shit about that. But at once the, uh, ner nervous system develops the pain neuron delivery system, I believe it becomes a partnership between the, uh, the woman incubator and uh, and and the infant or, or sorry the the fetus to be uh, carried to term to get to give it a give it a fair crack at um, at a life uh, so because because you do have to draw the line somewhere you will get some ir uh, radical morally bankrupt person that'll be like woman's choice absolutely up until the day that thing comes out she can have it eradicated. Like, and, and it's just that, that generally never happens, but it's, but, but people shouldn't say but, they uh, believe that a woman should be able to do that. I, I'm not sure that, I'm not sure that it doesn't generally happen. Like the, the, the stats uh, that I've seen in America shows it's, it's only like one or 2%, but one or 2% happens between eight months to term. And I don't think that's that, correct. It, it, it may it, that stat may be correct, but but I think in actuality it, it there's only a few cases of late term abortions happening when and 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 this is why I created the 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 term uh, sebation. I it's just a word I created. The sebation, I think people need to use that when doctoral intervention comes into play and the and the fetus has to be destroyed because it's effect it's going to kill the the holding mother so i tend to create a new term for that so people don't get confused that with abortion but those things I, do happen I, I'm, t I'm, I'm totally fine with that but there was a recent law that the republicans were trying to push from the for lack of a better term the pro-life side where where it would legally obligate doctors to keep babies that survived abortion alive and the Democrats well, voted that down completely. Well, uh, keep not... keep babies that survive abortion. Well, well, things that are being aborted aren't babies. Well, no. If if it comes out of the womb and it can survive without the mother, why would why are we, why are we forcing doctors to to kill it? They're 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 not being forced to kill it. Uh, the, in the in medicine, they're they're making a, a judgment call whether whether they can. Uh, they, they they typically do try to keep them alive. They're not being ordered to kill it. Then why would the Republicans be seeking legislation to force doctors to keep it alive? Because it's it's based on this irrational thing that never happens. It just never happens. Okay. And so so it, so so that never happens. But I agree with you on one thing: they can put in a piece of legislation that simply says. After this date, we do everything we can to help the mother and the fetus get carried uh, or to give it a, a, a fighting chance. And of course, yeah. uh, a sebation, what I call, it's a new word. I want to add this to the uh, 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 clinical vernacular. A sebation may occur, which means if the mother's life is threatened, uh, they always do need to err on the, on the side of saving the mother. I think that's important. Yeah, got, got, no, got no problem with that. Um, so th let's get to where I'm specifically struggling. Sure. Um, so ben Shapiro put forward a potential sentience argument that I find convincing. Uh, it's, okay. it's, been, it's been racking my brain and it, it messes with my, my concept of zero to 26 weeks abortion. And the reason, it, so the argument he puts forward is, uh, if you abort from zero to 26 weeks, it's it's the same moral equivalency line when you talk about um, someone that's gone into a coma from which they will awake. Yeah, I can eradicate that um, very quickly for you. Okay, um, so so when when so someone when they are actually born and we count them in this into the census, we actually sign a moral contract with that person and that person signs a moral contract with us as a society that they are now a citizen and they are protected under citizen law. 
we we start it at that point legally and and from a governmental perspective from a from a, a a country moral perspective we actually count that person as a citizen then so um it's talking about two different worlds if you try to equate a collection of of cells or a fertilized egg or, or all these things to someone who has actually been counted in the census you are a human being on this planet now we will take care of you is what the government's saying and including we need to make the best kind of moral judgments that we can for this person when it comes to the the, the type of um situations you're talking about like if someone if someone has has given their their life rights to another um, family member and that family member ha has the moral decision they have to make of whether they're going to pull the plug or not. Now, if, if the judges say, or sorry, if the doctor, do, do, do they necessarily get that moral, that, that, that choice to turn them off? If the, if the doctor say, says you will, this, this person will come out of the coma uh, in yeah. three to six months. So, so if the, if the doctors say this person will come out of this coma and 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 th this this are the these are the list of things that um, typically that power of let's call it power of attorney over their life that that power wouldn't uh, wouldn't transfer yet if they're uh, the power to pull the plug so there obviously has to be laws in place where if the doctors are like oh yeah they're they're in a let's say a medical induced coma or or just a they, they naturally went into a coma but we do suspect that they're going to be awake in a couple weeks not not a human being in history and this is where we need to we need to focus on precedent not a human being in history has been in that situation where the doctor has said yeah they'll be they'll be up in two weeks or three weeks uh has said no I, you know what just pull the plug that just doesn't happen so so, so let's go back to your your, your thing about a, a citizen. Why, why, why do you place that on birth specifically? Like, well, it's what, not it's not that I place it on that society. Uh, we we as a social species have decided that uh, because I think I think it comes from we understand that uh, a fetus is not a baby. And the, the reason why we don't have uh, funerals and these long drawn out mourning uh, uh, pr procedures and sessions and uh, like when people have miscarriages and things like that is because we actually feel more morally connected to our pet that we've had for 10 years than we do to the, uh, to the um, uh, miscarriage that we had. It's just if our pet, if our pet of 10 years dies, that's, that's a bigger deal typically for the human being than uh than uh, the, the miscarriage or the abortion or or any of these things but but okay well let's bring this up then um i i, I still struggle to see abortion as a good choice from the perspective of it it you have to have someone tinking around inside you with surgical implements and if everything goes right fine but things have a high potential to go wrong, and that that to me is a much higher risk. Like abortion, they actually don't have side. a they actually don't have a high potential to go wrong. Uh, but but, but uh, no, 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 compared compared to slipping on a condom or yeah, but uh, you know, here's I, the here's the thing: human beings, uh, being the pleasure driven species that we are, um, I will I will just speak a bit from my experience, uh, like in the modern dating world. Um, it's not that long when you're having sex with someone that, that the condom comes off and you, and you start to have unprotected sex, but usually there's some level of contraception on top of that. And I suggest people do that because not, uh, not only is, uh, the abortion, it, it, like, like you're right in the, in the sense of the abortion is like a, it gives us a, a bit of a disgust feeling because we, we do start, it, it opens up this new, uh, uh, pathway in our imagination where we imagine like what it would what it would have been like if we actually carried this uh or if the 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 pregnant female actually carried this to term what what would life have been like so there is a bit of bittersweet uh uh experience that comes with any abortion i think um but and then on top of that it's also like a an inconvenience right 
an, a, it's it's an emotional inconvenience. It's a actual physical inconvenience. There is some things that the woman has to physically do, um, but it's not as big of an inconvenience as people have been uh, led to believe, and it's not as big of a tragedy as people led to believe. And the and the the evidence I can show you is that. Obviously, we think humans humans should become come before animals when we're talking about like, uh, you know, the, the the proportional level of of uh, tragedy that you'll feel if your dog dies as opposed to your brother or sister or mother or father. Um, it it would be because it's not, just because it's not on that level of tragedy. I I I, I, can, I can imagine a situation where. Someone goes through an abortion and then experiences regrets and suffers psychological trauma. Uh, it has uh, happened. As a yep. It has th happened. Th th that seems like a needless thing to put yourself through when there are so many other better options where you don't have to go through that experience. And Such as? I, I just, I, well, well, I, I, I set it up as a, a rights versus responsibilities. Like right now, I, I, I'm not prepared to have children. It's not the right time in my life, but I want to have children in the future. So I haven't had my ball snipped. Right. right? So and that, that would like permanently uh, stop, uh, stop the issue. Right. So because I, I, I want the right to have children, when I go have sex, I accept that I'm taking on a level of risk that I might cause a pregnancy and have to deal with those consequences because because I want that right, I must now carry that responsibility. And like I said, a hundred years ago when we didn't have the technology to ensure that you that you had to do it, I think it, it's it's changed to the point where if you're having sex and you're not taking the precautions to not get pregnant, that you must now accept the responsibility of pregnancy if that mistake does happen, because you are ultimately taking that risk. And I, what, what is the uh, say, sorry? What uh, is the risk though? Yeah, you, 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 you keep saying risk. Uh, you, you're saying risk of potential psychological say, trauma. No, no, r r r risk risk of be becoming pregnant. Yeah, but why? Right? Sorry, so, sorry. Why is that a risk? It, well, let's say I use condoms. That's I still got a twenty percent chance of getting pregnant. So yep. that's a twenty percent risk. I throw a spermicide on top of that. No, I no, no. I'm IVG asking. I'm that. I'm asking you why you think the the possibility of getting someone pregnant is risk. Why do you think of it as risk? I don't view it that way. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. So, so, so well, uh, I, it comes back to the the fact that I want to be fertile so that I have the potential of having children right. in the future. I'm not. I don't want to have children now. So every time I have sex, there's a risk that I might have that child, even though I don't want it. And I'm making the choice to have the, the have so, sex. So, so I'll just tell you the way my language works there. I, uh, you know, if I'm having sex with someone, yes, uh, there's a chance that w we would become pregnant. But I, I think of that as just like, there's a chance. I don't think of it as a like a risk assessment. I don't. I don't. I don't bring like risk assessment into the uh, the act of of sex. That's fair enough. But whether you want to call it chance or risk, you accept. Well, I think it's a big by, difference. By yeah. Choosing to have sex, you accept that chance. And if you're going to choose to have sex, you. My my argument is you have to accept that chance of a potential huge responsibility. And if you don't want to accept that chance of potential huge responsibility, then do one of the following things. Either get your ball snipped so that you can't and then there's no chance and then you don't have to have that responsibility and then you can go have as much sex as you like. Or layer on the contraception because if you're using a condom uh, and um, I'm presuming you ha you're not in a monogamous relationship, but you can use a condom and you can use spermicide, uh, spermicide lubrication, and I'm pretty sure that's going to eliminate your your chance of getting pregnant. Right. So uh, so and and here's here's where the is versus ought thing comes in for me because we can say uh, we can educate the public as much as we want for instance with social distancing same as like same as like condoms if you wear a condom uh, in general no one's going to get pregnant and, and you're not going to pass around an sti um however however there is a yes we can build this scientific model and say this is a perfect model why aren't people doing it because condom sex sucks 
<laughs> and just in general and 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 I'm saying and and my argument deniability is that that simple human pleasure drive tends to trump most of these instances of uh of where the condom should actually be involved yeah but but it's, it's still it was, so, so what you're describing is the the, the free choice problem so pe people are free and they have the freedom to make whatever choice they like but the, the in a free society you're you're not 100 percent free you, it comes with rights and responsibilities if you want the right to be walking around out of jail it comes with the responsibility to not go around murdering people and as soon as you murder people you lose the right to um be walking around free so we have a, soci a free society based on rights and responsibilities yeah and i would put forward the argument that if you want the right to have sex you must accept the responsibility that you could potentially get pregnant and you yeah have to deal with the look i 100 percent. i'm not saying people don't but um it, this is probably a good conversation people should have before like if you are gonna have here's here's a little thing that might satisfy you if you are going to have unprotected sex you should have a conversation and and build some trust with someone uh and and say okay if things progress into pregnancy what uh what what would be what would that look like and then uh you know i've had those conversations before and uh you know the girl is like oh i would be getting an abortion um and and that alleviates some of the that you know stress that you might have to, uh towards that but, but, but you see uh, the reason i have a problem with that is you're essentially saying because I want to now be irresponsible, um, I want to mitigate my requirement for responsibility with the, the right to kill. Uh, oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. So there is no killing. There's no killing. No, but the, the, there's plenty of abortions that happen 26 weeks a term. So there clearly is. Plenty? How, how many do you think happen? And are they I, abortions I think, or are they sebations? I, I, I think, think uh, I do not think they're sebations. I think they're abortions. And if that number is greater than one, it's wrong. So how many, okay, late term abortions. I don't think percentages and stats happen because I'm trying to, I'm trying to, approach it from a, a moral perspective and trying to be consistent in my morals yeah and my, my my moral compass says it's 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 wrong to mitigate irresponsibility with murder yeah and, you're you're making a you're, you're making a categorical error to call it murder Maybe yeah. it's zero to twenty six weeks, but twenty six weeks a term. I I I have to say that it's murder because twenty six. Yeah, no, no, no. I I once the it, it's not it's it's not murder. I would call it wrongful termination, and there should there should be a penalty for it after the pain neurons start being able to be delivered. There is pleasure potential there. There is a seeking of pleasure uh, that can happen. So. A, a way to sort out this whole debate and if the, and if you guys haven't heard uh just search travis pangburn abortion you'll find my abortion uh podcast it's kind of a monologue um but but i talk about how if there was this law that was put in that really won't affect how things are going now anyway because late-term abortions really aren't happening they're not a thing um but if you, if you actually look at the numbers and statistics, uh, most of the time it'll be like, oh, doctoral in intervention had to happen and this abortion occurred. It's not an abortion. That's We got to call that something different. People get confused. Um, but so, so Stephen Crowder has a video in his last... I'm sure he does. <laughs> ...where he went into an abortion clinic with someone that managed to get an eight, uh, a late-term abortion at eight months Planned Parenthood didn't ask any questions. The lady was very open about it. Gave Stephen her name. They talked about it, and it was just really an abortion. Did it? Did it go? Did it go forward? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 doctor, the doctors didn't ask why. It wasn't a sedation. They just asked the baby. Do, do you rem and and was there were there any charges placed? 
because there's because uh, there's nothing. Uh, most uh, most doctors uh, most doctors will refuse uh, will refuse to do uh, that. Most surgeons will refuse to do that. Um, but uh, but I would have to see because uh, Stephen Crowder's uh, uh, guilty of uh, spreading propaganda, uh, false propaganda. He, he does it about Canadian healthcare. He does it. He does a lot of time with his little investigations. He takes one anecdote, which in fact, if this did happen, it should be stopped. Um, uh, but it's not murder. Uh, this the, uh, murder is a categorical error. Murder is when you murder somebody. That is not somebody. That is a fetus. Murder is when you have intent to kill a human being. And a baby at eight months that can survive outside the womb. No, it's not necessarily intent to kill. You can get, you can, you can murder someone with, with, uh, well, well, I guess they might call that manslaughter. Um, but yeah, I guess, I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah, you, you are right. Intent to kill. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it, it's not, it's not a, uh, it's not a human being. It's a human fetus. Um, the, the, all of these, all of these, uh, Anytime someone tries to weasel in something like equating that to a baby, yes, after the 26 week mark, it should be treated as a potential baby. Yes. But it, it all comes from like people rubbing the woman's womb and rather than saying, oh, your fetus is kicking, they say, oh, your baby is kicking. It, it, it creates a lot of confusion in people. And I think it's, uh, and I, and I think it uh, stems from, it, or it leads to this irrationality of this false equivocation of, oh, verse a baby that has been born successfully, healthy baby into the world, counted in the census, signed the moral contract with humanity. They are now being governed under the, under the law of the living. The laws are different for the fetus. But but I think uh, I think again, this is what I was trying to get at. One thing they can do is write a piece of legislation to appease the pro-lifers, and put into in the, into the legislation and say you cannot have an abortion past this certain date and then people would be like what if it's going to kill the mother that's a sebation we need two terms here sebation abortion sebation abortion so put a piece of legislation in that just says you can't do it after this for any for any reason you'll come up with oh my and and there are some the, there are some crazy things that can happen. Like after the 26 week mark, the, 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 the expecting mother's husband will die in a car accident, motor vehicle accident or something. And they just want it. They want to get rid of it. They don't want it anymore. It's just, they can't stand it. The government should step in and say, you know what? I, I understand this situation. We're going to give you all the resources possible, but the law is that you have to carry this, uh, this, uh, uh, fetus to term. And again, that law isn't really even dealing with anything that happens in reality. You might find a Steven Crowder anecdote, uh, but it generally, this isn't a problem. And uh, so, so some people would be like, well, then why the legislation? Just so you can actually point to that. If in fact, someone is trying to do this. It, it's, it's my understanding that pro-life movement is trying to get that sort of reasonable consideration into abortion and yep. the pro-choice movement is uh, completely against it. They just want the woman to have yeah. a complete right as her body all the way up to nine months. And I, I, yeah, I can't yeah. get behind that. That's a, yeah, yeah, no, it, it, that's completely irrational, immoral. If someone thinks that just because it's uh, deep in my <laughs> uterus, almost it, it, like, I ask people sometimes, I'm like, do you think that you should be able to get an abortion uh, one day before your original due date? And if they say yes, and then I ask them, well, what do you mean by abortion? Like, can't they just take it out of you? No, I want it eradicated. That's that's moral bankruptcy, um, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so, but yeah. but we have the um, we have the uh, technology to actually uh, look at the brain and see when things are developing, uh, when the pleasure potentials begin. And it seems to be around that 26 week mark. So that's where I draw the line for now until, uh, I can develop my pleasure drive theory to a point where, where perhaps the pleasure drive doesn't even kick in until maybe a little bit later, or maybe it's a bit sooner. So we, I think we just have to keep looking and developing theories and, and, uh, and, and of course they have to be based in scientific reality. 
but uh but yeah that's that's uh that's what i want to see for the future hey, cool. so I, i'm gonna leave you on this topic and let you get to the next yeah. quarter but i'm coming for you on canadian social health care i'm still doing my research <laughs> and I'm gonna, awesome. I'm gonna leave you with this i'm gonna leave you with this statistic in the united kingdom hailed as one of the prime and best national uh, healthcare systems. In oh, the world. I didn't know that. I didn't know that it's considered that. Ah, maybe it's just opinion here in South Africa. A lot of South Africans want to go to the UK for the NHS. Ah. Um, the the NHS's own object, uh, uh, their, their own stated goal is to treat all cancer patients within three months and 75 percent thereof and currently they're only reaching 62 percent is that in As great stand, britain that's in great britain and that's self-reported by the nhs okay the, so in 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 the uk on the nhs you have basically a crapshoot of being treated for 60 percent uh, that's a r roughly a roughly 62.3 percent so uh, with that statistic, I'd be interested to see how vital cases are treated versus uh, more common cases of cancer. Well, with, with, with cancer, as soon as you pick it up, you want to get rid of it. Like my, my, yes, my, my, my yes, you do. But but let me tell you something. There is a difference between uh, uh, like a, a, a severe malignancy versus a very minor malignancy that, that moves incredibly slow. We can actually determine this. Uh, but, yeah. but, but yes, but, but when we do look, uh, the, the goal is to, yeah, the goal is to be able to, to, to take care of cancer patients as soon as possible. Of course. True. But now I, my argument is still the private sector does that better. And in South Africa, we have a very well-developed private medical sector that does a lot of innovation for the globe. We have some of the best leading cancer researchers and cancer surgeons yeah. on the planet and my, my dad got a, uh, three years ago, he got a very rare form of skin cancer in his face. And mm. um, he got it surgically removed and touch wood. I mean, you can only really claim it five years after and it's only two years, but touch wood, he's, he's cancer free for now from that operation. And that operation, including plastic surgery, surgery to remove it, all the CT scans and all the medical doctors and three days in hospital, cost a total of 15,000 rand divide by at the time it was 16. So we're talking a thousand dollars for a cancer cure. And that's in a fully privatized system. That's not highly regulated. Yeah. I mean, ours, ours is, uh, ours is cheaper than that. And the, and the treatment happens faster and it's not private. It's a, it's a mix of private I, and public. I, I, I'm still doing my research in Canada based on my research, <laughs> to, uh, research on the UK. Don't, yeah, it's, don't, it's, don't just take my word for it. Cheap. Do research it. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm going to come, I'm going to come for you. Uh, okay. Uh, on your I can't just, wait. Just Fucking right. All right. Thanks, brother. We need to be able to have conversations without feeling like we're going to say something that gets us thrown in jail because people happen to be offended. Skepticism, skepticism, skepticism.